Good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Coville, and today's math lesson will be for all fifth grade students at Bethune Elementary. I will be teaching this lesson on converting measurement units. This lesson will be for all of my students as well as Mr. Moore's students. This standard that will be covered is MGSE5 MD1, and it says convert among different size standard measurement units mass, weight, length, time, etc. within a given measurement system. Customary and metric. Example, we will convert 5 centimeters to 0 0.05 meters and use these conversions in solving multi-step real-world problems. Some vocabulary that you will see throughout this lesson will be gallon, cups, quarts, pint, meter, kilometer, millimeter, ounce, pound, and convert. Be sure to stop and pause the video when needed and also be sure to write down any notes, all work that you see on the screen, either in your packet or on a blank sheet of paper. All right, boys and girls, so let's get started. So we'll be working from lesson 21 in your iReady packet. And previously, you have worked with measurement units in your earlier grades. Now, we will convert between different units in the same measurement system. So when we refer to units of measurements, we're referring to measurements such as inches, feet, yards, gallons, cups, quart, pint, meters, and kilometers. Those are units of measure. Those are how we will measure things, whether it's some things volume, its weight, its length, or its mass. Now be sure to look at our anchor charts that are on the right hand side of our screen. So our first question is asking us, is the number of cups in five gallons greater than or less than the number of gallons? So we have a picture showing us a one gallon jug of milk and then we have a cup. And our question is asking us if we're measuring five gallons, five of these jugs, will we need more or less than that number of cups to fill it? So we're comparing gallons to cups. So if I look at my anchor chart, this big G is representing one gallon. Now, in order to fill my one gallon, I can either use quarts, pints, or cups. Now these Q's stand for quarts. So in order to fill my gallon, I need four quarts equals one gallon. Then we can also use pints to fill a gallon. Two, four, six, eight pints equal a gallon. And 16, these small C's within these pints are C's. They represent cups. 16 cups will fill a gallon. So if I know that I need at least 16 cups to fill one gallon, I know that my answer is going to be greater than the number of gallons. So that means I will need more than five cups to fill five gallons. So question A tells us to circle the greater amount in each row. So stop and pause this video and on your own, you're going to circle which of these unit of measurements are greater. Is one gallon or one cup greater? Is two gallons or two cups greater? or is five gallons or five cups greater. Pause the video and do that on your own at this time. So you should have circled one gallon is greater than one cup, two gallons is greater than two cups, and five gallons is greater than five cups. Let's move on to the next question. B asks us, if you pour five gallons of water into one cup containers, would you need more than or fewer than five one cup containers? So based off of what we stated earlier, that I know that I need 16 cups just to fill one gallon container. This question is asking us, are we gonna need more than five containers? Pause the video, write your response below. Your answer should state that you will need more than five containers. Again, make sure you're writing in complete sentences, boys and girls. Question C asks us, is the number of cups in five gallons 
greater than or less than the number of gallons. So I know I need 16 cups to fill one gallon. Therefore, I know that my answer is going to be greater than the number of gallons. So in your response right now, you're going to write the number of cups will be greater than the number of gallons. Be sure to write complete sentences. All right, boys and girls, after you've written down your responses, let's turn to the next page. Hey, right, boys and girls, let's find out more. You measure for many different reasons. You might measure to find how long or tall something is, how much liquid something holds, or how much something weighs. You can choose different units when you measure. Think about your height. You can measure your height in inches or feet. Your height does not change if you are measured in inches instead of feet. It's just recorded using different units. Look at the picture at the right. We have one gallon. And we know that one gallon equals 16 cups. And if you look at our measuring cup, one gallon Four quarts, it shows us that four quarts equal a gallon, which e equals is the same as 16 cups equaling a gallon. And we have that written in red. The same amount of liquid could also be measured in quarts. Quarts are smaller than gallons. One gallon equals four quarts, just like we have shown in our anchor chart. Quarts are larger than cups. One quart equals four cups. So as we see in our picture, we have one gallon. We have a picture of one quart, which shows that it's less than a gallon, and one cup, which is less than one quart and a less than one gallon. So imagine filling the gallon container using cups, which is right here, or quarts, which is right here. You will need to fill the quart container four times to have enough liquid to fill the gallon container. You will need to fill the cup container 16 times to fill enough liquid to fill one gallon container. So now we're going to reflect. You're going to think to yourself and you're going to write down in the space below. And you're going to describe a real world object that can be measured using two different units. Which unit would you need more of to measure the object. So in the previous examples, we used a different unit of measurement, which we measured our height. And we stated your height could be measured in inches or feet. If you were to measure in inches, you would need more inches than feet to measure your height. So on your own, think of a real world object that you can measure using two different units. Pause the video and write your response below. So the example I gave for my response is, I can measure a football field using two different units. The field can be measured in feet and yards. I would need more feet than yards to measure this object. So boys and girls, your answers should be similar but not the same. Let's make sure we have a correct response and turn the page. We're now going to explore different ways to convert measurement units. So the question asks us, how many meters are in 3.5 kilometers? So our unit of measure are meters and kilometers. Now meters is our base unit. And if we look at our anchor chart to the right, it shows us how we can convert our units of measurement. So your base unit will always go in the middle. So where we see the blue, where it says base unit right here. Now I'm going to look for kilometers. Now our units of measurement are abbreviated. So kilo means kilometers. Hecto means hectometers. Deca represents decameters. Deci represents decimeters. Centi represents centimeters and milli represents millimeters. And these abbreviations will go with any base unit. So this could go for grams, 
This can go for liters or any base unit you use. So our base unit for this question is meters. So I'm going to look on my chart and I see that I have kilometers at the top of my chart. So at the top of my staircase, kilometers is a greater unit of measurement, is larger than my meters, my base unit, which is lower down here. So it shows us that as we decrease our unit of measurement, we have to multiply by 10 or a base unit of 10. As we increase and go up the stairs and go from a lower unit, a smaller unit of measurement to a greater unit of measurement, we must divide. So be sure to use this anchor chart to help you understand how to work out your problems, whether you're decreasing from a greater, a larger unit of measure to a smaller, or if you're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So our question is asking us, how many meters are in 3.5 kilometers? So again, I know that meters is a smaller unit than kilometers. So if I were to decrease and go from kilometers to meters, I must go down the stairs. So I see that when I go down, I must multiply. So you can also use a table to help you understand this problem. The table shows the relationship between meters and kilometers. So I see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six kilometers. And one kilometer is equivalent to 1,000. Two kilometers is equivalent to 2,000. Three kilometers is equivalent to 3,000 and so on and so forth. Now, if I look at my table and I think, hmm, what pattern do I see here? So I see that every time I increase my kilometers by one, my meters increases by 1,000. So I know that for every one kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. So we're going to use the information from the table above to understand how to solve the below problem. So the pattern in the table shows us that the number of meters is always 1,000 times the number of kilometers. So again, I know that one kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. Two kilometers is equivalent to 2,000 meters. So if I have 3.5 kilometers, and I know that one kilometer is always going to be a thousand times greater than my meter. What, how many meters will I have if I have 3.5 kilometers? Think to yourself and write your response, pause the video and write your response in this blank space below in your packet or on a blank sheet of paper. So you should have written 3,500. And to find the number of meters in 3.5 kilometers, you must multiply 3.5 by 1,000. And 3.5 times 1,000 will give you 3,500. Now, one way to multiply is to simply move your decimal over three times. Why three times, you might ask? Because my zeros in 1,000 will tell me how many places I must move my decimal. And if we're increasing, we're going to move our decimal which direction? To the right. Good job, boys and girls. So I'm going to write right here 3.5. And again, I'm multiplying. So I'm going to move my decimal to the right. So I'm going to move over one, two, three times. I'm going to leave my decimal right here. And I'm going to fill in these empty spaces with zeros. And then I'm going to insert my comma right there. So I have 3,500 as my answer. Make sure you write down your notes and let's move to the next page. So question two asks us, which is the smaller unit, meters or kilometers? Make sure you use your anchor chart to the right to assist you with this question. Pause the video and write your response below and also tell us how do you know? So your responses should say meters 
is the smaller unit. Again, make sure you're writing in complete sentences, boys and girls. And how do I know that meters is the smaller unit? I know meters is the smaller unit because it takes 1,000 meters to make one kilometer. Again, I know meters is the smaller unit because it takes 1,000 meters to make one kilometer. Question three asks us, what operation do you use to convert from a larger measurement unit to a smaller measurement unit? Think to yourself, what operation did we use to answer the previous question on the previous page? Pause the video and write your response below. So the operation used will be multiplication. Again, boys and girls, we multiplied in order to convert a larger measurement unit to a smaller measurement unit. And our answer, 3.5 kilometers equals how many meters? We answered and we know that 3.5 kilometers equals 3,500 meters. And this answer is from our previous page. Make sure you're pausing the video, writing this down, and let's move on to question five. So question five is asking us to use what we learned about the relationship between meters and kilometers to complete the table below. So again, we know that for every one kilometer, we have a thousand meters. So I'd have 0.8 kilometers, one kilometer, 1.85 kilometers, two kilometers, 2.03 kilometers, and three kilometers. So for our first one, we have 0.8 kilometers. Now I know I must multiply 0.8 by 1,000. Now the easiest way for us to multiply by 1,000, we're gonna move that decimal over. So I have 0 .0, 0 0.0008, and I know I must move my decimal over three times because I'm increasing it by 1,000. So I'm gonna move it over one, two, three times to the right. And I'm gonna fill in my answers, my spaces with zeros because it is increasing by a thousand times. My answer will be 800. So you're gonna put 800 in the response below. So now pause the video and on your own, you're going to complete the remainder of the chart. So the answers that you ha should have gotten, 1.85 kilometers is equivalent to 1,850 meters. 2.03 kilometers is equivalent to 2,030 meters. Again, it's increasing its value by a thousand and we're multiplying it by a thousand and or moving your decimal over three times. Question six, how many meters are in kilometers? So we know that there are 1,000 meters in every one kilometer. So pause the video and write your response below. So we know that there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. Question seven, there are three feet in one yard. Explain how you decide whether to multiply or divide by three if you need to convert yards to feet. So yards is going to be our larger unit of measurement because we know because it's telling us that we need three feet. There's three feet in for every one yard. So I know that my greater unit of measurement is going to be yards. So if we're converting a larger unit of measurement to a smaller unit of measurement, I know that I must what? Pause your video, write your response below. So your answer should say, I know feet are smaller, are a smaller measurement unit. Therefore, I must multiply to convert from a larger measurement unit to a smaller measurement unit. So, whether you're using converting feet, yards to feet, kilometers to meters, regardless of what you're, you're converting, you must be able to identify the unit that's larger and the unit that's smaller. 
Whenever you're converting a larger unit to a smaller unit, you always multiply. Make sure your responses are written in your packet or on a piece of paper. Pause the video and let's move on to the next question. All right, so now we're going to use what we just learned about converting measurement units to solve the next two problems. Make sure you're showing your work on a separate sheet of paper. So question eight tells us there are 16 ounces in one pound. How many ounces are in 10 and a half pounds? Think to yourself, what must I do to convert one pound to ounces? So I know that the pound is the larger unit of measurement because it takes 16 ounces for me to get one pound. So what must I do? Think to yourself, write your work on a scratch paper and pause the video. All right, so if you used your scratch paper, one way for us to solve the problem is to multiply 10 and a half pounds by 16 using standard algorithm. So again, we know that 16 ounces equals one pound, but we have 10 and a half pounds that we need to convert to ounces. So I multiply 10 and a half times 16. So I'm going to set my problem up using standard algorithm. And again, when you set it up using standard algorithm, the decimal really doesn't matter. You just set it up as if you're multiplying your, your numbers and you're going to bring your decimal straight down. So we're going to bring it straight down. So, well, let's get started. Six times five is 30. I'm going to put our zero, regroup our three. Six times zero is zero, plus three is three. Six times one is six. I'm going to put my placeholder. One times five is five. One times zero is zero. One times one is one. Now, I already moved my decimal down, so I know where my decimals are going to go. Now, I need to add my partial products. So I have zero. Five plus three is eight. Six plus zero is six. One. So I know that I have 168 ounces in 10 and a half pounds. So your answer in this space should say 168 ounces. Question nine says there are 10 millimeters in one, <clears throat> one centimeter. How many millimeters are in 9.25 centimeters? Pause the video and solve on your own. Now for this problem, I know I must multiply 9.25 times 10 because it's telling us there are 10 millimeters for every one centimeter. So for this problem, I could simply move my decimal over one place to the right because I have one zero in 10 millimeters in 10. So I'm gonna increase it by 10 and move it over one place value to the right, which will give me 92 point five. So my answer will be 92.5 millimeters. So go ahead and write that in the space below. I'm going to write 92.5 millimeters. Write your work down and let's move on to the next page. So we're going to use this table to help us understand the next few problems. The table shows us the relationship between cups and quarts. So I see that one cup is equal to four quarts. So I see that one quart is equal to four cups. Two quarts is equal to eight cups. Three quarts is equal to 12 cups. Four quarts is equal to 16 cups. Five quarts is equal to 20 cups. Six quarts is equal to 24 cups. So when I see this table, I'm going to think to myself, hmm, what pattern do I see? So I see that for every one quart, my cups must increase by four. So that means I know that I'm going to have to multiply 
my cut my quartz by four to convert them. So now we're going to use the information to solve the table below. So the pattern in the table shows that there are four cups in every quart. So I see that I have one quart is equivalent to four cups. So I need to find out how many quarts is equivalent to six cups. So to find the number of quarts equivalent to six cups, I must divide by four. Now the simplest way for me to divide is to write it as a fraction. So I'm going to write 6 over 4. Why am I going to write 6 over 4? Because 6 is the number of cups that I have and I know that there are 4 cups for every 1 quart. So I must put 6 as my, as my numerator and the amount of cups that I know is equivalent to 1 quart as my denominator. Now this is an improper fraction, so I must turn it into a mixed number. So 6 over 4 is equivalent to 1 because 4 goes in to 6 one time. And how many do I have left over? I have 2 left over. 2 over 4. Now if I simplify this, this will also be equivalent to 1 and a half. One and a half. How do I simplify it? Because I have must divide two fourths by two. So I divide my numerator and my denominator by two and I get one half. One over two. So in our response up here, we will write 1.5 because that represents one half. So 1.5 quarts is equivalent to six cups. And we solve that using our fraction of one over one over two, one half. So your answer should be one and a half quarts is equivalent to six cups. And we solve this by writing it as a fraction because we divided six into four. Make sure you're writing this down on a scratch piece of paper or in your packet and let's turn to the next page. So question 10 asks us, what, which is a smaller unit, quarts or cups? Press pause and write the answer down and also write down how do you know. So your response should state cups is a smaller unit. How do you know? I know cups is a smaller unit because it takes four cups to make one quart. Question 11. What operation do you use to convert from a smaller measurement unit to a larger measurement unit? Think to yourself how do we solve our problems on the previous page? Press pause and write your answer in the space provided. So I know that I must use division because again we divide it to convert our smaller measurements to a larger measurement. And we identify that six cups is equivalent to how many quarts? Six cups is equivalent to 1.5 quarts. And now that we know that six cups is equivalent to 1.5 quarts, you're gonna pause the video and you're gonna write your, you're gonna explain your reasoning on how we solved six cups is equivalent to 1.5 quarts. How did we solve this answer? So we solved this answer by, I divided six by four, the number of cups in one quart. So four, which is the number of cups that's in one quart. Make sure you're writing your answers down in your packet or on a scratch piece of paper. And let's move on to question 13. 